What is going on, YouTube? Pass the prop. Play went out yesterday. We're back in that zone there where we're talking about pass the prop, but we're here with YouTube play of the day. Pass the prop, NBA. Want to make sure I get you guys over there. Check out that show. Um, have my play of the day for NBA over there with NBA being back in action. But we got two spots here for YouTube play of the day. And uh, yeah, we're, we're ice right now, man. And uh, this is why when we are on heaters, you, you got to enjoy it and keep it going. And I'm not going to change anything that we've been doing. Really uh, like all of our spots. Um, but we'll talk with Sanford. First half to second half, light years different. Uh, I was expecting the second half type of pace, fouls, making of shots the whole game. And I think we saw a 90-something point second half. Um, flew over that number. Um, for the second half over, fortunately for the first half, it was like 35-25 or 30-25 and just couldn't get the, the big boy number that we needed there. So, uh, unfortunate, Sanford Falls. Um, Try to make it interesting. I appreciate that, that you're at least trying there at the end. But, uh, yeah, not great. Uh, Bama, I think they were like 3 for 12 from 3 um, in that first half. Flew over the actual number with it um, going into overtime there. Uh, but even with that, the second half, I think the second half over was 90 and a half and that cleared by like 20 with the overtime there. So again, just picking the first half versus full game, um, been successful with the first half. So it is what it is. I expected better shooting from Bama, especially at home, but they waited till the second half. till that started picking up. So, um, shout out Florida for playing a fantastic game. Shout out LSU. Um, talked about that LSU game, had Antonio Reeves as one of my plays last night as well from past the prop. Um, and uh, LSU getting a dub over Kentucky again, man, that's a that's a big win. So, all right, we're on to today. Two spots. Um, I'm going to be specifically on um, DraftKings this morning. Um, I know with, with these bigger slates, sometimes we don't get all of, of the plays that we're looking for yet. So let me just pull up everything here. And you guys will see what we are rolling with today. Today, we are rolling with Gonzaga first half team total over 44 and a half and Denver over 161.5. I mean, that's at minus 112. Both those on DK. Let's get into it a little bit. This is going to be our last time being able to back this one. I'm not going to be backing it in the, the three tough games to finish here. Um, I know some people will say that this is a, this is a stub your toe type of game. I don't really think it is because Gonzaga has to win, right? I mean, these dudes are on the bubble. Some of them saying first four out. You got to show out. You got to get this W. You got to get a big number on these dudes. And I think they do it early. I know it's on the road. I usually back Gonzaga at home. But, man, this Portland team is absolutely abysmal. Um, probably one of the worst defenses I've watched um, this year. And that's saying something. I watch a lot of big sky basketball. Um, and if you're telling me that this is one of the worst teams, uh, that's not good. 337 adjusted defense, 97 adjusted tempo in the country for Portland. Um, they're getting torched really every way you could ask. <laughs> These guys have been getting wrecked. Um, they do they do a couple things nice, and it's just because they're able to push the pace on a lot of teams. Unfortunately for them, Gonzaga is going to want to run faster than them, and, and that kind of takes away what they can do against a lot of these faster-paced teams. Um, looking at Gonzaga, a team that we always know is going to be towards the top um, in terms of, you know, efficiency ratings and all that. They're 69th in tempo, but they're 14th in adjusted offense. Gonzaga should be able to do whatever they want in this game. Looking at their first matchup, I know I'm going to get um, a regression monster, right? We're going to probably get that today. But I get it. Gonzaga shot, what, 50-something percent from three. Um, yeah, or 15 for 33, 45% from three. They're all open looks, first off. Second off, Graham EK played 17 total minutes and was in foul trouble the whole game. So points in the paint, they had 34 points in the paint with their best paint score out for most of that game. So obviously I don't expect Ben Gregg off the bench to score 20 something points in this one, but I do expect EK to pretty much do whatever he wants. Portland started two bigs last game, which you kind of have to do. One of them, a 6'11 freshman, 6'10 um, junior coming out there as well. And they're not going to be able to stop EK uh, at all. I, I think EK actually goes crazy in this game. Um, but also guard defense, 
not good at all. And I just want that first half, right? They scored 50 in the first half in that game. Um, what really kind of scared me with this Portland team is, dude, I think they just gave up. They gave up a big, big boy number um, to probably one of the worst teams. In, not, one of, not the worst, but Pepperdine. 91 points to Pepperdine, dude. They gave up 52 first half points in that game. I'm all over Gonzaga. I think that just this will be my last time being able to bet this. And it's been great to us. Absolutely phenomenal for us so far this year. Um, I think it continues to be a play I want to roll with. And then they have Santa Clara, St. Mary's, and San Francisco. So I think few is going to roll it up here, try to get up early, pull the starters. We got 20-something minutes out of the starters in that first matchup because uh, they were up so big. Thinking that's probably the case for what they want today as well heading into Portland. So sign me up for Gonzaga first half team total over 44 and a half. You, more, you know who's coming. You know who's coming. We're talking about our boy, Tommy Bruner. Absolutely love this dude. This guy is awesome to watch. If you haven't watched him, guys, you need to watch them. This de excuse me, this Denver team honestly is not that great outside of him. But that dude is so damn good. Bruner went up 26-6 and six in that first matchup with only 17 shot attempts. Um, I think this is going to be a track meet like the first matchup, 179 points in that first matchup, 99 to 80. I get it. Denver was at home. You guys know I like to back them at home there. But what I really like was the, the ability for uh, South Dakota State to be like, okay, we'll run with you because your defense is so bad. And I think a lot more teams are more willing to do that now. Um, South Dakota State right on the side of the top 100 in terms of adjusted um, tempo. And now – you're playing one of the top teams in tempo in the entire country here and one of the worst defenses. Both these defenses are awful. Uh, Denver ranks 354 of 362. They're a top 100 offense and 40th in the country in adjusted tempo. This is going to be fast. This is going to be no defense played. And can you hit shots, right? So with Bruner, he's pretty much just a cheat code at this point. And the reason why I like going on this full game number is Denver, first off, 14th in the country in uh, second half scoring. Uh, they score 43 points per game in the second half, which is a big boy number. Uh, they score 44 at home, but they also score 42 and a half on the road, which means they usually kind of start a little bit slower um, and then kind of bring the pace towards the towards the end of the game. Um, let's just look at South Dakota, uh, South Dakota State. Sorry. Um, when you look at South Dakota State, those guys are averaging 40 points per game in the second half as well. So, I think that you could go first half. I like the first half number. I'll probably bet the first half number. But if I was going to take them, I'd probably do one and a half units on the full game. Um, and then maybe a half or a full unit on the half. Because I like this one. I really like this full game. I don't know. I really don't know who stops anyone. These guys leave each other so wide open. Uh, a lot of points were left out there too. South Dakota State, you're not going to tell me. You're not going to tell me that this team is going to shoot. Let's take a look. They shot... Six for 22 from deep, guys. Like, that is not what we're used to seeing from these guys, right? Um, obviously, North Dakota State gets a lot of, of love for how good a shooting they are. But South Dakota State shoots 35% from deep. And they shot that poorly in the first matchup. Obviously, Denver is a tough place to play. Denver, a good free throw shooting team. They shot 68% from, um, from the line. Not good. Um, and then we just have so many fouls, 34 fouls in that first game, which if we're going to get that again, where the fouling is there. We just need to hit those free throws. Denver left a few points on the board. They should have been in the hundreds. They should have scored 100 on this team, this defense. And uh, I think we could see either team score 100 tonight. Um, looking at the number here, um, we're seeing South Dakota State eight-point favorites, right? That's how big of a home road difference this is for Denver. But, but I will never count out Tommy Bruner. I think that this dude is going to go crazy. They have no one on that side to slow him down. And honestly, we look at South Dakota State, uh, when we look at those guys, I love Zeke Mayo, man. Zeke Mayo is a stud in his own right. Only shot seven for 16 in their first matchup, one for seven from three. Expecting a big game from him as well. So I think it could be a fun one where we go back and forth with two high-end guards. Zeke Mayo has been great in that league for a couple of years now. And Tommy Bruner, obviously, number one in the, score, uh, in the country in scoring. So Denver, over 161.5, phenomenal second-half team. Same with South Dakota. And I'm going to roll with this first-half number. I'm going Gonzaga, team total over 44.5 at minus 120. I get it, guys. We've been called... This number is not what I like it to be. Let me adjust this there. I adjusted the number. All 
already. But we're 15 games over 500 this far into the season. I, I say this to a lot of people. It's a roller coaster season, man. And, and honestly, you just can't get too high with it. You can't get start just throwing 400 bucks when you're when you're up on some of these bets. Keep it even cue. I understand it's a boring way to bet, but I feel pretty good about it right now and uh, feel pretty good where we're still at um, with this number this far into the season, especially because the season has been wild. So I'm rolling with Gonzaga in Denver. Hopefully you're joining me. 52-37 on the year. Let's say in double digits. I'm expecting a couple good games here tonight. So great action. Big Sky, Horizon, all the leagues that you know are close to my heart. I'm going to be rolling with these guys today. So best of luck today, guys. Appreciate you rolling with me. Hit that like button. We'll see you.